Hey there, history teachers. Got a game just for you. And what I mean by just for you, the series really isn't a template. Oftentimes, oftentimes, almost all of my games are templates that you could build and put your own questions into. Uh, this is a specific one. This is for world and U.S. history teachers, all designed about one of my favorite topics to teach in history, which was the Cold War. Um, this game is specifically uh, just for that time period. It's already got questions pre-populated within there. It follows a lot of my traditional style review games. If you've played those before, then you, you, you'll find this somewhat um, uh, similar to what you've done in the past. But it's all been done for you, for you. The questions, the answers, uh, and I'm just here to show you a little bit about how the gameplay works. This is called Cold War Temperature. Hey everybody, yeah, I'm Ryan, the Game Show Guy, and got a fun game I've been developing uh, for a while now, and it's like I said, it's about the Cold War, and it's also Cold War themed, it's got Cold War sounds, it's got Cold War gameplay in this, and I'm trying to be able to think how I can be able to, once I'm finished with this history style game, sort of strip it out and turn it into a spy game that any teacher could use, and so this is my first sort of demo in this, uh, with this uh, kind of gameplay, and so... Let me just kind of walk you through and show you how the game is from the beginning. So since it's not really based on anything. So it's uh, what inspired was this was a lesson I used to do in my history classes, which was the idea of um, so many of these events of the Cold War kept escalating the tensions between the between the West and um uh, and the, and, and the Soviet world, you know, capitalism versus communism. And you have all these different sort of, you know, um, issues and events that happened back and forth that things kept getting more and more dangerous like the cuban missile missile crisis and such where um the world got kind of to be a dangerous place and so this is all showing about how these uh things that uh, your kids have learned about in the past are continuing to rise uh the temperature the game is going to be basically designed which is the um uh, there's going to be one country last standing of uh, the idea of it's going to be ultimately get too hot. And so there are a series of you went, forget it. Let me just jump into this thing so you can see it and see what it sounds like. All right. Jump in like all my games. I got sound effects that kind of go with this thing. Cold War temperature is what this is. And then we jump into here. You are all UN ambassadors. And there's going to be six countries. Um they're going to take part in this, which means you're going to need six teams. Um, you could do less, I would think. Could you do less? Yeah, you could do less in this one, yeah. Uh, then every question or stage in the Cold War is that no matter what, uh, it's going to get hotter and more dangerous. So every stage, the temperature is going to continue to get up until it reaches a point where your team has been eliminated from this. So your job is to try to keep this threat level from boiling over. And to do that, you simply need to be able to try to answer questions correctly. After each question, the country's temperature is still going to go up. So tensions are always going to increase. Your job is if you answer a question correctly is that you can only make that one degree. If you answer incorrectly, then the temperature is going to raise up two degrees. So no matter what in the gameplay is that we're always going to be elevating at least one, even you answer correctly. Once a team uh, team's country reaches the boiling, pa boiling point, they've lost the game and they're removed and we're going to keep playing until there's only one team left standing. But I got a couple Cold War tools twists along the way. And those Cold War twists are as follows. First off, espionage. So the players who play in this particular one that just, you don't know when it's going to show up, but when an espionage round shows up, you're going to be asked to answer a question. And what happens on this one is then um, you simply get to be able to pick and choose. So let's say if I'm playing and I want to be able to have the Chinese have raised their temperature, you basically can put it on them. So you're going to basically attack one uh, one country. Yours will not get uh, raised at all in the espionage rounds. Only the one country that you, you deem you want to be able to knock out. The second one is going to be called peace talks. One delegate of your team is going to work directly with another UN team's delegate. And if both can match their answers, then each nation is going to actually turn their temperature down one. So if the first one is going to be, I'm going to pick a team to attack or a country to attack. Now you're going to have to work with another team. And if you guys can match, then um, peace will be there temporarily. So this is a matching based question. <coughs> <laughs> and
And lastly, we have a third one called Shadow Play. What's this one? You're going to have to wait and see. And so um, that's what you'll tell the kids. The other, the, you'll tell them on the other ones what they are. One is an attack. One is a work collaboratively. And the third one, you don't know what it's going to be. I'll tell you what it is. Basically, it's an escape room style game. A puzzle in which that they're going to have to be able to research and find certain numbers. And if you've ever done any escape rooms or an education called breakouts, um, they're going to have to find certain numbers. 12 of this plus nine of those divided by six of that gives you a number. The first team that can come up with the correct answer of a number based on these historical Cold War things um, will win in that particular one. Let me show you ultimately what it looks like. So when you move forward and say, hey, everybody, now it's time to be able to start the round. This is your main game board. This is the boiling point levels. And so the countries that you can see down there, I have the US, the British, the French, East Germans, the um, the Chinese and the Soviets. And so above them are your uh, temperatures. And we'll start at the temperature. We're all sitting at a nice calm, cool 80. And so if, uh, let's say we play our first question and everybody gets it right, we're only going to move up one. And simply what you do in PowerPoint is you click on the number. 81 is simply going to basically make that temperature go up. In the future, if you needed to be able to make it go down, like in one of those peace negotiations, if you click on 81 again there for the East Germans, you can see it goes away. Basically, they're all just on-offs. So let's say if the Chinese got it wrong, you do click on two, move two up there. There's just one there. And so when I come back to this, it will still be there. Like all of my games, it's essential. You cannot escape and get out of this because all of these will go away. If you have to play this over two games, sorry, multiple days, my recommendation is take a picture of the temperature with your phone so that you can come back the next day about and, and, and which ones are done. Same thing applies with the questions because kids can randomly pick and choose. So if you're going to be playing over multiple days, you're going to want to be able to take a picture of the game board to know which questions have been selected before. So here are the here's the question board. I have 30 questions on here. Some of them are those twists, like I said, along the way, the, the espionage and the peace talks and such. And so you can either go in order or you can have the, the teams randomly pick. It doesn't matter, but each of these are just either a question or one of the twists. So the way in which I play almost all my games, just like in this one, is I would have one member from each UN delegate to come up. So, hey, send up one of your representatives from each of this. And so the Americans and all that sort of stuff. Not a bad idea, too, to be able to print out the... Um, I have a document in here that has each of the map, uh, sorry, each of the uh, flags that you could print out and put in front of each uh, team's desk so you can remember who is the, who are the Chinese and who are the Soviets and who are the Americans. And so that's in the same thing that you can be able to download. So I would have each of them all come up, hold up a whiteboard to their chests and then an answer uh, independently without any help. So one player from each team comes up and let's say we'll do question number one and the question comes up. The U.S. policy designed to prevent communism from spreading was created by FDR's successor and it was known as the blank doctrine. So the kids are going to take a moment, right? I'm going to wait for them all to finish, make sure that they're all finished. All right, delegates, show me your boards. Each of them turn their boards over and then you click on the classified button on our little top secret document over here. If I click on classified, then the answer comes up. Truman, that is the Truman doctrine. And now I can be able to see how many, how many of the delegates got it correctly. Um, send them back to their uh, back to their desks, to their teams. And then the back button is going to take me here back to my temperature. And so um, I need to take note, remember, or have them continue to have the, the correct answer on there and say, hey, who got the correct answers? Uh, the Americans, you got the correct answer. Nice job. You only move up one. The British, you got it wrong. I'm going to click two on that one. And you'll do this and you'll continue to do this. Uh, and move that temperature based on how well those uh, the teams got those answers correctly. When I click on the question board to go to the next one, I can see number one has disappeared. And um, um, I go to the next one. I could do uh, the next question, number two, or we can bounce around your, your choice. There are the twists along the way that you do want to be able to get to. And there's... Um, um, and there's eight of them that are out there. Five of them? Eight of them? I don't know. We'll look up in a second. I can't remember the number. Um, 
uh, and have a new players. I like to have new players come up each and every time. Um, and then comes uh, up the, que- the next question. You can see here, you could put, uh, uh, the questions are already done for you. Some of them have images, some are fill in the blank. There's different kinds of questions. Feel free, please edit them. This is just a generic kind of stuff that most te- many teachers would get to most of these things, I would think, in the Cold War, if you're doing world or U.S. But it's kind of, you know, based on if you're doing either of those subjects, one is more American-based, one is more world-based. So please change them. They're just text boxes or images that you can go in and and change them. Also, if you run out of questions, I really love putting pop culture references in there or things about you to be able to add to it. So you click on the classified and there comes the answer every single time. It's all been animated. They can't move forward. If you click anywhere on the document, it's been disabled. You click on back. There goes my temperature again. I continue to rise along the way and click on the question tab and such. So um, I'm going to hop out of here. Remember, if you do hop out in the game, everything goes away. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to jump forward all the way down here to the end. These are some things that you have that um, I would recommend either print out or maybe write out ahead of time um, just so you have a heads up. So this is, you can see slide number 47 is hidden, so it doesn't show up in the gameplay. Um, But for you, if you want to print this or write it down, basically it shows you where all these things are at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was right with the first number eight. So um, I have uh, four espionage, the attack rounds, and that's question number four, 11, 20 and 27. I have uh, these three of these peace rounds. And then right in the middle, number 15 is our shadow play. There's only one of these ones. So I'm going to remember here, we're going to do number uh, four, seven, and 15. I want to show you what they look like in the gameplay. And then when I click on number four, sound effect comes up and lets the kids know we're playing espionage round. And then when you click on this, <clears throat> It's going to take me to that particular place, and I'm going to say, hey, everybody, send one of your spies up, and you're going to have to <clears throat> have them pick which team they want to attack before. So if I'm the Americans, let's say, I'm like, okay, uh, who do you want to be able to uh, – attack beforehand. So they're going to say, I'm going to attack the East Germans. Great. So they're going to write East Germany in the bottom corner of their uh, whiteboard. All of them will do the, do the same. I don't have them show who they're attacking yet until their answers come up. And now here comes your question. And this is just another question that comes up. So this form, this American pamphlet is a form of blank, which is designed to promote or publicize a particular point of view. All right. Show me your boards, everybody. Correct answer is, okay. If you click, you, the correct answer will show up and it says propaganda. And then from there, uh, I give uh, award those points to everybody, or so the uh, the winners, and then from there we'll go back, and then we can be able to attack extra. Now, like I me- like I mentioned before, if you notice, I got out of the game, and so by getting out of the game, the board has been reset. So that's why it's essential for you not to be able to um, to be able to do get out of the game because you lose everything. All right, so our next one I think was question number seven. Perfect. Here is our UN piece. Um, uh, the peace talks kind of a thing. So when I click on that one, it shows up. And from here it says, all right, now decide which teams are going to work together. And so I let them going to be able to kind of figure it out sooner or later. You have to have an even number of teams. I have six in here. If you want to cut that down to four, you can do that, but you can't necessarily have an odd because there's some people are going to need to match up or whatever. So I'm like, okay, everybody you guys quickly, who do you want to be able to team up? I let them kind of do it on their own. Um, kind of a fun how they kind of be able to say, do you want to team up, team up, team up? Perfect. All right. So once their teams are matched up, then I'm going to have one person from each team come up and they're going to have to stand face off to each other so that they can't cheat because this one, they definitely need to be able to get the right answer. And so then this thing comes up like here, it says, complete the missing word in this communication. Your word must match the counterpart from the other country to be successful. Okay. So they got their boards and it's simply going to be on this one, a blank question. So it's not necessarily a right answer. It's more of an opinion. It could be different things. All right. So it's East blank. Um, and they're going to have to go. This was based off an old television show called match game kind of a thing. So now they let them look at each other, make sure that they're not going to cheat because it kids will cheat. Humans cheat. What are you talking about in game shows? Everybody tries to cheat. They'll try to mouth the words kind of a thing, write them, hold them. And then I'm going to have everybody show your boards in this one. You kind of really going to have two, possible answers. You could have three. I mean, anyway, so it's going to probably have East Germany, East Berlin will be sort of the main ones. Show me your boards, everybody, and the teams that match ultimately are going to get that reward about turning their temperatures down. And that's kind of how, the, uh, how those work. You can look at the other ones. And oh, last thing, I'm going to go back and show you what the, I think it was number 15, didn't we say? It is. Here is shadow play. Mm. 
Shadow Play is super fun. There's only one of them. And this is going to be that escape room style uh, question. If I click on here, it says, all right, here we go. Top secret. We must act uh, quickly. This is how it works. The team is going to work together. So each of the countries, it's not one person. As a team, they get to work together. They're going to decipher some top secret clues that came in. And the first team that could uh, come up with the correct number is going to turn your own temperature down two so you can drop down two everybody else is going to go up one they get to do the opposite and go down two on this one feel free to change those numbers if you want but anyway now this one there's need to be research so they got to be able to they need something because they don't know these things this isn't a i know the answer this is we need to go research and do stuff so have everybody get out a chromebook or get out their phones they should have devices that are going to be out prep that ahead of time so they're not like having kids go through their backpacks or open up the cards or something like that but um it's going to be simply a race. You're going to say, ready, set, go. And they can throw up a whole bunch of numbers. Your decision, do you want them to continue to throw out numbers or does everybody only come up with one, uh, one number? If you do that, you could be messed. You, you could go down the road of what happens if they all get it wrong. So that's why I like to be able to say, give me as many answers as you can. Or maybe you can't give me a second uh, answer until another country has given me um, a number. But basically, I'm looking for the correct number. And this basically, all of this can come off of like a Wikipedia search or a general search the web. And it's going to be this. You're going to take the number that Russia tested the first atomic bomb. Then the way they have to be able to do the math is every single time they're going to have to be able to get a new total and then do the next thing. So they're going to take that year. Then from there, let me stop the sound on that. Um, so you're going to take the, uh, the year that they tested the bomb, then take that number, subtract the number of the Apollo mission that landed on the moon. Then with that total, divide that number by the latitude that roughly separates North and South Korea. Then add that number to the numbers that were originally in nato and then finally once you have that number divide that number by the day sorry yeah by the day in november in 1989 when the berlin wall felt fell and so you're just going to be sitting there and watching them go through and do that sort of stuff there's only one answer one correct answer and, it, and you may want to tell them too don't give me there's no there's no fractions there's no decimals this is a straight whole number that need to come up to me so kids shouldn't come up and go 25.397 you're like no it is a whole number that whole number is seven by the way Okay. And I've double checked this a hundred times and I, I think that maybe not that many times, but I've, I've, I've done all my math on this stuff and I think it works. So double check it yourself too on a quick search that, Hey, the, the year they did the bomb was in 49. It was Apollo 11. Korea is the 38th parallel. There was 12 countries in NATO and it was November 9th in 1989 when the Berlin wall fell. And if I do 1949 plus 11, take that total, divide that by 38, then you add 12, then you divide by nine, gives you seven. It's, this may take a little while it should be a fun hectic kind of a thing have them have a piece of paper out if they want to be able to do so they can work on their math and that kind of stuff and somebody needs to have something out for a calculator and it should be fun and kind of hectic and all that sort of stuff and then folks that's the game you got more of those different peace talks here's you got east berlin was one the other one was blankism this one you could have a couple different things communism or capitalism or socialism uh, the other peace talk would be blank war i would assume it would be cold war but you could have vietnam war or they could do the Korean War. And if you don't like this, you could simply just change it and make it into an actual question. Both of them have to get the right answer. Anyway, the different espionage ones, they're just straight up questions. One is propaganda. The other one is mutual sure destruction and Nasser. Like I said, if you never got to talking about Nasser in your class, then get rid of that and put somebody and put another one in there. Go through the questions. Don't just open it up and this is going to be plug and play. It needs to fit into your particular class. I, like I said, my goal is to turn this into a spy themed uh, game that um, a lot of different classes can use based on any topic or whatever. But I want to try to fit this a Cold War spy thing into the Cold war unit so for those of you who are doing cold war cold war please check it out uh since this is brain spanking new i have not played this with students and i would love to be able to hear some feedback so please check it out let me know how things are going you can check out all my things uh, all my games on tpt and as usual like you're watching here on youtube i'd love to be able to see some feedback so check out my other videos and uh and uh love to be able to hear back from you as always everybody i'm ryan the game show guy hope you have fun